Hello everyone and welcome back to CEDH Budget Bible. Today I'll be debuting my Emery Lurker of the Lock deck tech that I promised and forgot about and here I am to deliver it. Uh, so, alright. <laughs> this is this is an Emery deck, you know, CEDH standard stuff. And it, it's a polymorph deck that uses... Chakram Retriever and Mirror Inspi- I guess I'll just explain the combo first. Alright, so these are two creatures that you use to- Whenever you cast a spell, you get to untap a permanent, which is Emery and you- Where is it? The, you use this card, Lotus Petal. You tap Emery, cast this from your graveyard, and then if you have one of these- two creatures on the battlefield, you get to untap her, sack it for mana, tap her, cast it again, and you just get infinite mana, and then sh her ability, her second, why do they keep doing that, this ability, uh, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard, it can just help you get a ton of, like, uh, cheap artifacts, which I'll go over towards the end of the video into your graveyard, you know, just for a card advantage. So starting off, we got Narset, you know, limits your opponents from drawing excess cards, and it can find you spells if you need that, but mostly just there to limit your opponents drawing cards. And then Tezzeret is super good in this deck because you can just minus zero him because all of your combo pieces other than these two are zero mana artifacts. Like, um, one, like, I forgot, I forgot once you have this. There's a one zero mana artifact. Uh, where is it? Yeah, there's a ton of zero mana artifacts. This Urza's Bobble, Mishra's Bobble, Conjurer's Bobble, just any card that can draw you a card after you have infinite mana, uh, you'll just win. And this card can search any of them, any artifacts, actually, if you want. It can search any of them out, so that's why that's here. Fabricate. Searches the deck for any artifact. Doesn't really need explanation. You got Kitaxian Probe. It's in every blue deck. Super good card. Merchant Scroll can uh, tutor you an artifact tutor. Or High Tide. Or well, just whatever instant you need. Polymorph to Polymorph Emery. And uh, get the Mirren Retriever. Or Mirren Spy and Chakram Retriever. You got Ponder, Preordain, you know, these are pretty standard, uh, blue card draw spells. And then you got, uh, Reshape, just Artifact Tutor, Sack and Artifact, Pay X, get whatever you need. And then Windfall, it's just a good wheel. Uh, I didn't want to put Time Twister or any of the other, like, expensive ones, because I wanted this to be a budget deck. And then you've got a ton of interaction, you've got... Arcane Denial, Blink of an Eye for Creature Bounce, Brainstorm for Card Draw, Chain of Vapor, Counterspell, Delay, Dispel, Fluster Storm, you got Impulse for Draw, Mental Misstep, Miscast. Paradoxical Outcome is surprisingly underrated in this deck. You have a lot of zero mana artifacts. And artifacts, well, this is a budget deck, but if you had artifacts that tap for more mana, than they come into play for. This card can not only uh, draw you cards, but it can act as like a like a ritual type spell for for artifacts. And this card can draw you a ton of cards for only four mana. One of the best cards in the deck. You got Pongify, Rapid Harborization, just take out creatures. Reality Shift again, just take out creatures, you want all of these effects you can get, because blue doesn't really have a lot of them. You've got Reweave, this card is just an expensive polymorph, basically. It has Splice onto Arcane, which you don't have many Arcane spells in this deck, I actually think there are none. And you have, you know, Snap, Bounce Creatures, Snap Back, which is a underrated card that will be in the underrated blue videos. And it reads, you may remove a blue card in your hand from the game rather than pay snapback's cost. Return target creature to its owner's hand. It's just a free snap. You just 
two for one yourself return a creature super good card requires no mana spell snare counters thought snare or thought scour draws you a card puts cards in your graveyard super good card you've got your unsubstantiate uh for you know bounce a spell back to your hand bounce one back to your opponent's hand bounce a creature all that good stuff you got unwind to counter spells untap your lands you got Whir of Invention, just tutor out the artifacts. And you've got Winds of Rebuke, so just return any non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then you get to put two cards from the top of your library into your graveyard, which gives you more card selection. Now, moving on to artifacts. Aether Spellbomb can bounce a creature, draw a card for one mana. It's just good utility. Arcane Signet, you know, good for ramp. Basalt Monolith, again, good for ramp can just basically cycles to draw you a card once you have infinite mana chromatic star same thing claws of gix okay so there are a series of cards in this deck that aren't really particularly useful but they're just zero mana artifacts because emery can reduce her casting cost by one for every artifact you control so if you play two uh, zero mana artifacts you can get her out on turn one and start using her ability for card advantage which is super good and you know claws of geeks not necessarily useless you can gain some life but i wouldn't say it's you know a all-star in the deck and then you've got uh where did it go codex shredder you have infinite mana you can just tap this card to mill everyone out just another win con conjurer's bobble again just there for the combo cycles itself to draw a card dark sphere dark sphere is actually uh pretty good because if you're about to take lethal from anything you can just sacrifice it and it'll deal half rounded down so i wouldn't say this card is necessarily useless this card is it's not bad like i like it i've never used it like for its intended purpose it's just there to reduce emery's cost ever flowing chalice this is a pretty good card because you know you can play it later in the game for ramp play it early to get emery out just good utility you can tap for mana to help you cast your spells and then we got lotus petal just part of the combo and almost every cedh deck it's just that good mesmeric orb whenever you untap a permanent you get to mill a card and because of emery every artifact in your graveyard is basically in your hand so if you want to get you know whatever back mesmeric orb will put it in your graveyard for you you got mindstone for ramp sack it for card draw just good utility artifact mitra's bobble again there for the combo cycles itself you got Pithing Needle. Now, Pithing Needle is super good, and you can just shut down commanders with activated abilities, like, uh, I don't know, Silvala, actually both Silvalas, uh, what other commander has active, uh, Kenrith, just, you can shut down a lot of good stuff with Pithing Needle, and it's only one mana, and you have so much utility due to the fact that Emery can, like, mill herself, and then your graveyard is just basically your hand now. You've got Proteus Staff. This just polymorphs a creature, but it's here so you can tutor it out with artifacts to get your polymorph creature online. And it's not the best card in the deck, but it is needed because other than this, like you're not really going to be tutoring out your combo pieces. Like, you're not going to cast a Whir of Invention for zero to go get Lotus Petal. I mean, you might, but I kind of doubt it. You got Soul Ring. It's in every deck. Sorcerer's Spyglass. Just a more expensive Pithing Needle. S does the same thing. Still good. You got Soul Guide Lantern for graveyard decks. This card is super good because it doesn't exile your graveyard. So... This should be in a lot more decks, and it might be in an underrated video. I don't know, I gotta think about it. And then the Spellbook, no maximum hand size, just a zero mana artifact. Tormod's Crypt, uh, exiles all cards from one target player's graveyard, so probably won't hit your own. You got Urza's Bobble to, you know, just draw a card, get that combo online. And you've got Welding Jar, you could just sack it to reanimate any, er... <laughs> regenerate any artifact my bad 
and you can just bring it back every turn to re or oh my god regenerate any artifact you want so yeah that's the that's the list of artifacts for this deck and then you got artificer's intuition for the first enchantment this card is super good cuz if you draw it, you can just discard it. Let me read the card first. Discard an artifact card from your hand. Search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or less. Reveal that card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So you just discard any artifact, go get your two combo pieces, polymorph, and you're good to go. This card can get you card draw, can get you creature bounce, it... You just... Discard an artifact which you can get back with Emery, probably super cheap, and then, you know, just get whatever utilities you need. And this card does it all for one mana and just discarding a card. Drown Secrets, it's the, uh, whenever you cast a blue spell target player, puts the top two cards of library into the graveyard, so you just, you know, add artifacts into your hand just by milling yourself, so it's only two mana in enchantment, so pretty good mystic remora it, it's in every cdh deck that has blue such a good card secrets of the dead whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard draw a card so whenever you cast the lotus petal for infinite mana you can draw a card and that's super good because now you don't need the other uh you don't need your zero mana baubles to help draw you cards we got verity circle instead of uh what's that card Ristic Study, because this is a budget deck. Of course, you can put Ristic Study in, but Verity Circle's pretty good. It's good against green decks with a lot of mana dorks, or uh, just any deck with tapping abilities. You can draw a card every time they tap. And <laughs> Zur's Weirding, one of my favorite cards, and is definitely going to be in the blue underrated video. All players... Let me read this card. Players play with their hands revealed. If a player would draw a card, he or she reveals it instead. Then any other player may pay two life. If a player does, that player puts that card into its owner's graveyard. Otherwise, draw a card. So, if they decide to put it into your graveyard, you can just cast it with Emery. And you can keep recasting Emery. Because your opponents are going to be worried about what's in each other's hand. They're never going to draw any cards. And you can just leverage the graveyard for advantage to pull your combo off. So this card basically skirts around uh, anything your opponents could do to stop it. It hurts your opponents way more than you do. It's basically like a one-sided stacks piece that prevents them from drawing cards just by paying two life. And then, finally, for the lands, we got Ipnu Rivula, you know, just sack it, mill cards, does the damage to you when you tap it. Mystic Sanctuary, just play it, get whatever instant sorcery you want back from the graveyard on top of your library. And then, Snow Covered, <laughs> they, they could be just regular, I, you don't have to play Snow Covered. And then, Teleria West is here for... You just transmute it for a zero mana artifact, which you can just recast like over and over. It's just there to get combo pieces. And yeah, that's pretty much the deck. Got your ape token, your frog lizard token. And this deck is... where did it go? I saw it a second ago, but this deck is clocking in at... uh, a, There it is. $141.63. And that's that's pretty good for a budget deck, I think. I was aiming for 150 with this deck, and I think I got, I did a pretty good job on uh, building the deck. And let's just jump down to see all this stats and data. You have a 100% chance of playing these on curve. These are all zero mana artifacts, so yes, you'll always get them out. It has a super low curve, so you won't necessarily have to have a ton of mana to make the deck operate, which is what I like about it. It can pull off early wins with just enough like fast mana and enough tutors. It can pull off uh, some good wins. And <laughs> these are this is not a good hand. We can deal another hand before we play test. This is a pretty good hand. Why don't we just go down here real quick, play test the hand. All right, so got this. Play a spell book. Draw a card. Maybe we'll pass the turn, you know. Maybe we'll uh 
have to hit their soul ring with a mental misstep. And then next turn, we'll draw a card, play this, get Emery, and then oh, put that into the graveyard. So we hit a mirror and spy. That's not, oh, we hit both of our polymorphers. That's uh, that's not good. I think right. I think if you hit both of your polymorphers, you would lose, right? There's no way to there's no way to get those back, is there? No, I don't think there is. Other than what is? I think one of these cards. Yeah, Codex Shredder can return it, so... Still not good, though, if you do do it, but... You know, it's not... It's not the worst. But, yeah, so that's my deck tech for a... Budget Emery Lurker of the Lock, and I've tested over 20 games with this deck, and this deck is <laughs> very good. It does really well on a budget. Of course, you can make it non-budget to include, you know, your Force of Will, your Force of Negation, your your mystical tutor and all your fast mana but this deck functions pretty well without those uh without those things in the deck so yeah that's my uh list for a budget emery lurker of the lock this is cedh budget bible signing out i'll see you guys in the next video